If you've been writing code for the last two years, your workflow probably looks like you open VS Code, you open Copilot or a cursor, you type a comment, hit tab, and the AI finishes your line. It's faster, sure, but let's be honest, you're still the engine. You're the one context switching, you're the one reviewing every line, and you're the one pasting errors back into the chat when things break. You are the pilot. The AI is just the co-pilot. But Google just announced something that wants to flip that dynamic entirely. It's called Google Anti-Gravity. They aren't calling this an IDE, they're calling it an agentic development platform. And the difference is massive. In anti-gravity, you aren't just typing code with the helper, you're managing a team of autonomous agents. You tell them the goal, and they plan, write, and debug. They actually test the app in a real browser while you watch. It's powered by the new Gemini 3 model, and today, we're going to see if it lives up to the hype. We're going to do a full walkthrough of the interface, look at the new artifact system, and break down three specific use cases where this tool shines. If you're wondering if you could switch from cursor or VS Code, this is for you. So let's dive in. First, we need to understand the mental shift here. Current AI tools are assistants. They wait for you to type. They are reactive. Anti-gravity is built around agents. An agent is proactive. When you give it a task, it doesn't just spit out code. It acts like a junior developer. Number one, it plans. It looks at your request and outlines a strategy. Secondly, it executes. It writes the code across multiple files. And lastly, it verifies. It runs the code to see if it actually works. And the craziest part, it's model agnostic. While it defaults to Google's new massive context Gemini 3, you can actually swap the brain out for Claude Sonnet 4.5 or OpenAI's GPT OSS. You can get the best shell with the brain of your choice. But the real innovation here isn't just the AI, it's the interface itself. So let's open it up. All right, if you want to download anti-gravity, go on to antigravity.google.com and you'll be able to land at this homepage. Once you're here, you could download the product for your specific device. So I have a Mac, so I'm gonna download it for Mac OS. Okay, looking at this screen, if you're a VS Code user, you'll actually feel safe. It's actually a fork of VS Code, so all your extension, themes, and key binding works are all available on the side. You can open up a new folder and run the project locally on your device, or you can just do it over here. You also have the agent manager option here. Once you open up the agent manager, you'll see an interface like this. So this is kind of like the mission control. In a normal editor, you have a chat box. Here you have a workspace for all your agents. You can spin up to multiple agents at once. You could even have one agent fixing a bug in the back end while another agent is completely redesigning the CSS on the front end and they run parallel. So now that you have an idea of what the workspace looks like, let's actually see this in action. So I've opened up a new workspace, which is basically creating a new folder and I've called it anti-gravity. Since the product is called anti-gravity, Let's lean into that and the prompt we're going to give it is going to show off the physics engine and the browser's ability to handle complex animations without you actually writing the math for it, which you would have to do with normal programming. So I'm going to say build a zero gravity portfolio page. When the user scrolls, all the text and image elements should float up and bounce off of each other like they are in space. Add a gravity toggle button that when click makes everything crash down to the bottom of the screen using matter JS physics and make the aesthetic glass morphism with neon accents. So I've given that and as you can see, you have the option to do planning mode or fast. We're going to do planning mode because obviously our task is a little bit more complex and we also have the option to choose what model we want to use. Uh, we're going to choose Gemini 3 point pro for our example today. So let's press enter. So on the side, you can see it has opened up a task list. So whenever you give it a task, uh, funny enough, it creates a task list like a junior developer would, which would be like, okay, I got to set up the project. Then I have to create an implementation plan. Then I have to verify that if everything I have given it works. So we can see that it has created that. We also have the implementation plan. So your implementation plan is kind of like working with a junior developer and your junior developer is telling you like, hey, this is what I'm going to do. And these are the steps I'm going to take. So it has shown you what it has done, the glass morphism style that it is going to implement, as well the Matter.js setup, the zero, zero gravity logic, and then the verification plan, which is like, okay, I'm going to open up the file in the browser, then observe the elements floating and bouncing. I'm going to see if the gravity button works, and if it does, everything should fall at the bottom, and then check the overall visual style. So you can see it's working on the side over here, and then you can see the implementation plan right now. All right. 
as you can see, our new updated web page is ready. We can play around with these things. Um, the agent is actually testing it out at the moment, so I'm not going to touch it. So it just the agent just disabled gravity and it brought everything to the bottom. Um, let's see what else the agent is doing in his testing mode. So once the project is complete, it gives you a walkthrough, which is basically showing you the steps it has taken to get to the end result, as well as screen recording of the verification it has done. So for example, I verified the enhancement by running browser simulations, and you can see the browser simulation like it playing around with the disabled gravity button and elements falling down, as well the files it has updated, enhancement it has added. This walkthrough is kind of like your check to make sure that whatever it has done, it makes sense to you and the verification looks correct to you. And if you want to play around with it more or make some updates, you can obviously type a new prompt in and it will go back and do that. So what you're seeing on screen right now is another example of what somebody created with anti-gravity. They created this world that they can walk around with and they asked anti-gravity to create an NPC character called Elon Musk with the level 999 so anti-gravity created all these assets the tree the world as well the elon musk image so we can see this is pretty cool for what it was able to do and this was all done through an agent remember guys so this is another example of somebody creating it looks like a minecraft version through gemini 3 and anti-gravity so it's not too bad it's getting the basics of it now obviously like being able to move around and everything like that takes a lot of coding effort it was able to do that it was able to generate clickable grass images uh the user like the user interface could be better and the design elements could be better, but for what it's able to do within a couple of seconds is not bad at all. And I wouldn't be complaining if I was able to create this. So if I were you, I would take advantage of anti-gravity at the moment. Currently it's free and you can get started by downloading the IDE onto your local device like I did. But in the future, they are planning on probably adding pay features to this. So remember that you have agent models. So you have access to Gemini 3 Pro and Claude Sonnet 4.5 and GPT OS. You also have unlimited tab completions, unlimited command requests, and they are generous rate limits. However, what I'm seeing online is that some people are actually running out of those rate limits. So keep that in mind. If you're a team and a small organization, you have that coming in the future as well enterprise plan so these are early stages but pretty exciting times ahead so how does this compare to the new cursor 2.0 it really comes down to speed versus verification cursor 2.0 is built for speed with their new composer model and shadow workspace it checks your code in the background silently to keep you moving fast it's designed to keep you in the flow state google anti-gravity is built for verification it's slower but it's more transparent Instead of working in the background, it forces the agent to generate artifacts and test the code in a visible browser window so you can physically see the results before you and approve them. If you want a faster editor, stick with Cursor. If you want an agent that proves it works, try anti-gravity. But also, why not use both? If you enjoyed this video, this is what we do here. Fast, clear updates on the biggest moves in AI. If you want to stay ahead of everything happening in this space, make sure you're subscribed. And if you want the hands-on side, demos, tools, workflows, and everything developers can actually build with, check out the world of AI. We also run a simple no-noise newsletter that gives you the most important AI tools and updates in just a couple of minutes. Subscribe here, follow World of AI, join the newsletter, and I'll see you in the next one.